and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, and it is Love Line. I'm Dr. Drew. Adam Kroll will be with us momentarily in the studio with me. Puddle of Mud. New album is, well, not new album. It's been out for a while. Come Clean. In the studio is Wes Scantlin, lead singer, and Greg Upchurch, the drummer. How long's the album been out for? Uh... Got the, three three months. Greg to my left, West to my right, <coughs> as like, you're facing me. I think uh, three months, maybe. Um, four months. How's it going? Four months. Okay, we'll say four. Four months. We'll go with four. <laughs> Are you guys out on tour right now, or is it? We just actually got done um, finishing our first headlining tour, and. Um, we are very tired souls. I bet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand how you guys do it. You're living. Are you on a van? I mean, you, a bus? Or a, you yeah, a we're on a bus. Oh my God! How many guys are there in the band? Five, uh, four. Four. Four people. Four. Yeah, Paul Phillips is the guitar player, and Doug Ardito is the bass player. You got Greg Upchurch on the drums, and Wesley Scantlin on four, that. Four uh, musicians stuck in a van for how many months? This is scary. It's eight months. This is scary. Since oh, oh, God. God, where are you guys from originally? I'm originally from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, I'm from Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, Kingston, Oklahoma. A little thousand town. How did you guys meet up? Um, How did this happen? Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I went to a Family Values concert and Limp Bizkit was playing with Korn and you know a bunch of other awesome bands. And I had a demo tape with me and I, a friend of mine had some uh, fake backstage passes. And uh, like we got backstage and I gave it to Fred's security guard, Richie. And uh, he called back a few weeks later and then... We, uh, you know, I flew out to Los Angeles, and that's where I, uh, that's where I met my homeboy over here, Greg, mm -hmm. and Paul. Did he, and, uh, he put you guys together? Um, we kind of, I, you know, not really. I mean, Greg, you know, we we had to search for the Greg Meister. Yeah, you know, that was the final everybody piece. else. It was all good. But the rest of you already were together. No, we weren't all already together. But how did you get together? Um, when I got when I got to Los Angeles, I met uh, Doug. Ardito at in, he was interning at Interscope Records and um, hey man I, I happen to play bass <laughs> he's like hey man I play the bass man you know and, and he was really cool so uh, we started jamming and Paul flew out but, but from, somebody wants to put all this together <clears throat> well it was yeah you know it was just like well I, the band from I mean the original Puddle Mud kind of fell apart that was the somewhat. one that you showed Fred yes okay and that fell apart you came out here to perform with them or. Uh, no, I just came out here because, you know, Fred called me up and he was like, hey, man, you know, I really like the music and I think you're a great singer and I want to help you out. And I, 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 so he brought you out and I, he put everybody together out here. We didn't really, I mean, I guess, you know. I you mean, were, were you living with you him? Did he put you up? How no, no, uh, no, no. I, I flew out to Los Angeles, had to do a lot of showcasing. I mean, it was just like a Blitzkrieg, you know, thing. So. And who organized that? Who organized that? That would be Fred. Okay. There you go. All right. Got it. Now I got it. All right. You know how this show works. You just uh, chime in whenever you want. Uh, you can't say anything. Well, you can't say things wrong, but I'm here to uh, make sure nothing happens as a result He's of the it. doctor. Yeah. This is a Naomi's 15. Naomi. Hi. What's Hello. Up? What's up? Okay. I got a question for you. Okay. Okay. Is it true that when a girl gives a guy a head, you know, and swallows, does it stay inside of her stomach? <laughs> for <laughs> for a few <laughs> moments, you know. <laughs> For a few moments, yeah. Yeah. And then it sort of absorbed and washed. Does it come out as a number one or a number two? It, a little bit of both. Okay. A little bit of both. Okay. Uh, there's not. It's, it's sort of like, uh, you know if you uh, sucked in what comes down the back of your nose? Yeah. Same same idea. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. That is disgusting. I, okay. I feel sorry for you guys. And um, if you do that too many times, swallowing and stuff, is it true that you, have to, you, can, get, you can have to have your stomach pumped? Mm, oh. I, I've never seen. <laughs> this is you know you sit around Sacramento thinking about these things. I've I've never seen uh, that happen, and I've spent a lot of hours in emergency rooms. Okay. Because I heard that happened to little Kim. <laughs> I'm so serious. You know, I I would think at the point at which you would want your stomach pump, you'd be vomiting anyway. So, and the the real issue here is that there are potential for sexually transmitted diseases, just the same ones you can get by genital contact. You can get them from giving the old oral sex. So don't swallow Kim. I mean, HIV and all that good stuff. Let's see here. Oh, is, God. Uh, not nice. This is Sean, who's 22. Sean. Oh, hi. Um, Puddle of Mud, love you guys' CD. I love that video, dude. That's awesome. Thank you, brother. Um, I haven't seen the video. Wait, wait, hang on. What, how would we know that video? What happens in it? Um, I don't remember the name of the song, but it's where you're walking down the middle of the road and you have to, and you grab the keys out of the out of the truck and you throw the keys out in the, in the, in the mud and right that's it no that's a good Rock video on. man oh, thank you 
bought the CD yesterday. I haven't le- learned all the tracks on it yet, but just um, got it. So cool. Um, Thank you, man. My question is is. For the last two years or so, I've been kind of living with, like, a anxiety disorder. I, I think it's an anxiety. I'm not sure yet. Um, <laughs> You're 22. Yeah. You should kind of have that figured out. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I, I guess, yeah, I, I kind of do. Right. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Basically, um, what sh- is there anything that I can do by myself and on my own? Um, maybe reading materials or anything that I can um, research or learn about? Uh. Um, overcome this on my own, or should I? You na- should might I check out the website, the National Institute of Mental Health. But anxiety disorders, th- there is a behavioral component, and, and I know at University of Washington they have a big behavioral program for treatment of anxiety, and so they they may have something out. Uh, so you might try the medical school at University of Washington. But generally, anxiety is thought of as something that responds to either medication or to therapy. Okay. And and therapy is not is is about developing a new sense of yourself in relationship to another person. So it's not something you can really do by yourself. Oh, really? I'm saying? Yeah. Now, you can certainly read about how to change behavior. You can read about how this works. You can read about the biology of it. And there are medications that are very effective, too. Oftentimes, this is really a mood disorder mm-hmm. associated with it. So, uh, NIMIH and University of Washington, okay? And, and what was that? National Institute of Mental Health and University of Washington. Check out their websites for the medical school at University of Washington. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. And this is Aroma, 17. All right. Um... What's up, Dr. Drew? I've been listening for a long time, first time caller. And last weekend, my girlfriend and I, we had a threesome with another chick. And I was just wondering, because she was like totally into the other girl. You're 17. You guys did that at 17? I'd never got a threesome at 17. There was only I like four haven't. girls in my high school. <laughs> they had to form a rock band and uh, go on the road for a few years before this happened to them. Well, who was this person? Who were these women? Okay. Women. How old were they? What's their number? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> How old were they? One of them, my girlfriend, my girlfriend's 16, and the other one, I don't know, it's her friend. Whose idea was this? It was hers. Your girlfriend's? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, and so what's hey, the question? Hey, oh, oh, geez. Oh, what was that? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. The party's over. Oh, was, oh. oh no. Adam Corolla. Oh. Daddy's back. Oh, so scary. God, it was hi, good. Wes. Hi, Greg. Hello, Adam. How are Hello, you, brother? Adam. It's good, good thing we t- spent that time talking on the phone about who was in here, so the yeah. uh, engineer couldn't hook up the line. That's All right, good. well, we're, I'm back, and uh, uh, I've been listening. The show's been horrible, Drew. Without yeah, relax. horrible, Just shut up. <laughs> go, go ahead and lighten it up. All right. Well, wh- what's this guy? He's Seventeen, and he had a threesome. His girlfriend's sixteen. It was her idea, and now the problem is Roma. What? I just, I like, I don't know, like, if she's not even into me anymore or not. She's into this other girl. Yeah. The other girl that... Oh, man, they're breaking out the toys. <laughs> well, no, sure. Roma, here, here's the deal about threesomes. Is that everyone has their own sort of nefarious reasons for getting into them, but they always cause feelings that you don't expect, and it always destabilizes the relationship. Very few relationships survive this. If this were someone you wanted to stay with, your girlfriend, you, you shouldn't have let this happen. But on the other hand, it was her idea. It sounds like she's kind of lesbian anyway, that she's more into the, you, these, his, her girlfriend than she is into you. Was she sexually abused or anything? Um, not that I know of, but like when we're together, like, we have sex on a regular basis. On a regular basis. And then we're, she's, like, fine with me, like, all into me and everything, but then just around her, like, this time, she was, like, not even interested. Yeah. All right. Well, she's obviously a little chaotic, yeah. and you got a good story for your grandkids, so everyone's in great shape. <laughs> I'm afraid that's about all it's going to be. It only works what, in the movies. What kind, of, <clears throat> what kind of toys do you pull out in a 16-year-old lesbian relationship? Is it like Are uh, you asking Roma? No, you're asking. No, the band. no, Wes or Greg uh, mentioned it. Oh, that, that was be, Greg. No, that was Wes. No, I was Greg. You know all about the toys. I, think. I was like, uh, uh, I, like, I actually <laughs> mentioned the toy. I was just saying, you know, that there definitely should probably be some toys involved. I would yeah. think, you know. But but isn't Lego going to have to come out with a dildo <laughs> soon enough? I mean, I mean, let's look at the look the at Lincoln the average log. age just spiraling down. The, the age, age, yeah, the age of experimentation. Yeah, like um, Nerf comes out with one. Uh, <laughs> Nerf, oh, Lego. Come out. Yeah, there, there does need Kenner. to be a, a Disney. <laughs> my first dildo. <laughs> <laughs> what to expect when you're fill in the blank. Expecting. Okay. Uh, Adam, I saved this one for you. It is Jen, who is 28. Hi, uh, Dr. Drew. Uh, hi, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. Um, Dr. Drew, i got a question for you. Um, I've always had large breasts. Ever since I was little. Bouncy, bouncy. Yeah, a whole, whole bunch. And um, I've noticed 
as I've gotten older, my nipples are like turned in. Mm -hmm. And what can I do to bring them out? <laughs> there are, I believe there's some surgical procedures for that. And you can sort of keep them worked out. There's, you know, lubricants and things that you can see a dermatologist might be able to help you with that. Uh, yeah, general I, surgeons I, can. I can you coax that. them out? Huh? You get a, a you personal, uh, like, assistant, like, lick them all the time. Or suck something. on them? No, no. no. Okay, I'll, so, well, what what about an uh, Indian guy to blow one of those uh, snake charming blowing your thumbs or something? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, Greg has an idea. Yeah, just blowing your thumb real hard. No. <laughs> but, well, can can they be brought out? Can you yeah, get them can out? Can they be brought out? I mean, my my breasts are like huge. I mean, like can can they be brought out? Yeah, they can I mean, be. It's like uh -oh. shut up. Can they be brought out? Yes or no? Uh, I guess. I don't know. I mean... You should be working on right, Hold they, on. Would you put this goofball on hold, Drew? She's on. Drew, I, I'm trying to ask if she can get her nipples yeah. out. She, she, Did, she, does she not know she what can, I'm asking? She can, and she was actually experimenting with them as you asked her, but she is, really needs you to know how big her breasts are. That's the big thing. Here. I, I know, but I, I just want to know if she can get them out. She doesn't... She's sort of, I guess, or maybe, or I'm not sure. All right, here we go. Jen? Jen? Yes. Can you get them? Can you coax them out? Uh, one of them I can, and the other one I can't. Okay. <laughs> okay. And and so once you get them out, can you keep them out? No. I mean, if, if you put a uh, zip tie or something on it, <laughs> I mean, you physically you could keep it out, right? Couldn't you? Uh, it just gets soft again and it goes, goes, goes back, back in. in. Yeah. Well, how big are your breasts? Uh, Forty-eight triple D. Oh my! Whoa, God. Oh, man! Whoa, whoa! How big's the rest of you? Um, I weigh like 165 pounds. Damn, right. bitch. How, how tall are you? I'm like 5'3", five 5'4". Five oh, my God. Oh, All wait, right, wait. Let, let, let me do some quick radio math here, fellas. 5'3", 5'4", 155. Can we bring the four around? I got 5'1", five and 5'8", five 168. Mm. So it's, uh, she's, she's a, a stout gal. <laughs> uh, what if the breasts were smaller, Drew? Would it would it help? It might. I, again, I, uh, yeah, it might. I'm not well, sure. Look, look at it this way: if a, if a woman is completely flat chested, does she ever have inverted nipples? Yes, she can. But mm -hmm. would you say it's less likely? Or Le you don't I'd know? say it's less likely. Less likely to be a problem. That's for sure. This is like this when they're like this; they sort of fold in and get irritated and be a real pain in the neck. Right, right, Jen. Jen? Yeah, it's it's a pain in the neck. Yeah. yeah. What, it, what what's your boyfriend think? Uh, my husband loves him. <laughs> oh, he likes a man. Uh, he just likes him anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got an in, I got an inverted penis. Maybe you should <laughs> No. <laughs> Yours is I'll just, just crawl. I'll crawl in your mouth and suck your nipples. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're you can go up my ass and give me a BJ. <laughs> oh God. Sure, it's retractable penis. Doesn't that be fair? Well, all right. Maybe all right. you're right. All right. Well, you can concert, uh, consult a uh, plastic surgeon. Yeah, I guess. absolutely. And this is, and otherwise, I agree with that. I'm kind of coax them out, leave them out, and take care of the skin. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it's but a, I wonder what happens when she has kids. I mean, you think that'll bombing. change things? Might come out. It's really hard to predict how women's breasts. Some of them involute and, and shrink way down. It's it's different. It depends. This is. What a, did she say forty eight triple E oh or something? God, I don't know. That's triple G. I. This oh. is Drew from Tennessee. He's sixteen. Drew. Um, yeah, I got a question for the band. Yeah, what's up? Go ahead, brother. Uh, what's y'all's relationship with Fred Durst? Because I, I was watching one of your music videos, and uh, I noticed that he directed, uh, he, he directed um, Come Clean. Um, yeah, you know, he directed, you know, he directed Control, and he oh, directed yeah. Blurry, the, both the videos, and, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he originally signed me in, in, in the band and stuff, and, um, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a great friend of ours, and he helps us, uh, you know... Amazing, gives us amazing help and guidance, man. He's a he's a really uh, All right, thanks. Uh, but, but he doesn't really overdo anything. Nah, he, he doesn't. doesn't he's, he's not like he gives us our freedom. All right, cool. All right. Uh, oh, I just want to say, Adam, you are a god. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Whatever, Drew. You are a passionate, passionate, passionate man. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> All right. Why? Bye. Hmm. Uh, John, twenty-five. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, about a mollusk from Contagious one. Uh huh. I was wondering, you know, about a year ago, doctor told me that I have it, and I was just wondering what kind of a uh, sex life I can have with it. What kind of? Well, it, it's it's easily curable. 
Didn't he take care of it? Yeah, he gave me uh, yeah some cream. Some cream. Usually, just either you burn them off or shell off the little zits. That, that is it. Just in your pubic area? Yeah. Yeah, and they, what, that's Drew, the end what of it. do they what do they burn them off with? A cigarette or like Liqu- a temporary well, li- liquid, liquid nitrogen or electric unit, a little, little electrical spark unit. And, and they, uh, uh, it's, do they always come back? No, they don't. They usually go away. In fact, it's molluscum contagiosum. And the band is looking very. Mol- here, here, I'm confused. West, west. Mol- molluscum contagiosum. Okay, it's a virus. Common causes little. Looks like zits with a hard top on them, and if you mm-hmm. peel them, a little shell pops off usually. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, I love when you say uh, I love when you say spoon them out. Yeah, you can spoon them out. Like shell them out is what I say. Shell them out. Shell them out. Yeah. I love that. Like an oyster. No, it's yeah. like like a melon baller. You shell them. Oh, out. Yeah, you shell them out. And that's it. Uh, there, it's a virus. It's contagious. It doesn't hurt anybody, and uh, it's it's sexually transmitted. Do do, do women get all? them? It goes. Yeah, women do get it. It goes away. Yeah, it probably could go away if you left it alone. But it can be. It can be pretty awful. It can be spread all over the place. Mm-hmm. They need to be taken care of. Why in the hell don't you have them taken care of? Oh, I, I have. All right, then relax. Okay. They're fine. It's all good. Wow. Is it, is it the caller tonight or me, Adam? <laughs> it's uh, you, Kaylee, twenty-three. Hey. First of all, I wanted to say what's up to Puddle of Mud. What's up? I, I seen you guys a couple of weeks ago in San Jose. It was like the best concert I've ever been to. I had so much fun. Thank you. It was really awesome. But anyways, my question was, um, I just found out I'm like about a month or so along. I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. And um, I have my nipples pierced. And I was wondering if you can... Bre- if I have to take them out to breastfeed, yes. Or okay, but you can breastfeed. I can. Yeah, but uh, I'm worried about this baby. If you don't cut out the pot and alcohol, <laughs> no. Kaylee, <laughs> I don't. I don't smoke weed. I swear to you. But as far as the alcohol goes, um, I'm going to be going into a rehab. Good for alcohol. All right. In about um, two to six weeks. Is that? Are you going to be able to stay abstinent in the meantime? For sure, yeah. You're not using? Um, well, tonight I am, yes. Using alcohol? Yes. And you understand that can permanently damage the baby? Yeah, but... Um, you got to prioritize, Drew. Come the, on. This is why I'm getting help, okay? Because I can't stop drinking. Yeah, but you you need to go somewhere now yeah. before, you, before you harm you this child. You can go to an AA tomorrow, probably. I, I go to AA meetings with my father. All right, then, but you need to get yourself a sponsor and get some peers in the, in, that can support you and keep you absent. And this is of life-threatening importance to your child. There's not no effing around time right now. Well, how, how much booze do you drink? Um... Um... Basically sounds like a lot. Night. It sounds like a lot, Kaylee, and this this is extremely damaging to the child. When when is it when is when is it the worst? What I mean, point? First night. month, second month, third well, month? See, I already have a, a two year old son. Mm. Does he have fetal alcohol syndrome? No, I drank with him until I was like three months pregnant, and then um. You listen. Just because you die, first of all, you he may start to have problems. I'm sorry to say, Kaylee, as he develops. Well, but Drew, are you ever going to be able to tell whether it was because of fetal alcohol syndrome or because Kaylee was his mom? It's hard to tell, but sometimes you can tell those things. Number one, number two, if for the grace of God it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean you can dodge the bullet a second time. Right. So let, let's let's take care of this immediately. Immediately, Kaylee, come on. Well, hey, Kaylee, what are you doing pregnant again? Is it the same guy or a different guy? Um, it's a different guy. Did this right. did this dad that uh, was the alcohol recovering alcoholic was he abusive to you when you were growing up? My dad, um, when when I was six, my parents got divorced and he was wasn't around. No, that's not enough to create this. But where but where both, is they're both alcoholics? <clears throat> like alcoholism runs very strong on both sides. No, I understand. I get that. But were you abused in some way? I mean, why all the sexual acting? By out? my stepdad, yes. Stepdad abused. All right. All right. Yeah. Where is uh, where is Papa Number One for the uh, my first? My dad, kid? he's he's here with me now. He just got out of prison um, like a year ago. All right. Do you, do you, you really you really think you should be having another kid? Um. No. Yeah. Why don't you give this one up for adoption? Because I don't want to. All right. Well, are you just hell bent on ruining this kid's life? I'm not. I mean, gonna, that's, I'm not going to ruin his life. Well, well, well Kaylee, well, you're, then, you're abusing that's him what right you now. Said about the first one. Well, no, that you're abusing him right now. But that's why I'm getting help. Yeah, I understand. But 
it, the situation is so out of control that you're still abusing, even though you want to get better and you're doing, you're, you're going to get help. This is a very serious situation. Right. And I'm not sure I, you're going to make your own mind up, and I understand that, and I and I hope you recover, and I hope that you can recover and manage two children by yourself. I, but I don't know how. I have help. My um. You're the parent. You're the only parent, and believe me, as you know, having one kid doesn't matter how much help you have. Well, you're, see, you're my ex boyfriend, the father of my child that I have now, I live with his parents, and his mother is um, she runs a daycare. And she helps me a lot. Like, what? What is second? What's the uh, second boyfriend? Is he your boyfriend? <laughs> Ooh! Whoa! What was messed yeah. up for? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, listen. Anderson's punishing her. I, I want to. All right. He put her on hold. How come but you didn't I'm give her the usual speech, Adam, <laughs> about the endangering our country? And I, I was just getting warmed in. All right. That. Go ahead. Go. Well, is she on or is she gone? Well, she's. I'll put her back on. Here we go. Kaylee. Oh, I, I have some pertinent questions for young okay. Kaylee. Yeah. Like where where's the second dad? Is he in, in the picture? No. He lives he uh he has another girlfriend living down in Long Beach. So he, he's not gonna be part of the child's life? Um he's trying, I guess, but Whatever, I don't really the, care for him too what much. I, what I'm saying is, is the guy who knocked you up most recently, is he around? Um, he's around, but... Adam, forget it. Okay. Listen, Kaylee, give that goddamn kid up for adoption. Do you hear me? I guess, If, yeah. if it was up to me, I'd just take him away from you. You're, you're endangering this kid. It's, it's complete and utter chaos, your life. I'm sorry what your evil stepdad did you. If your dad was in front of me, I would kick him in the nuts as hard as I could <laughs> swing my goddamn foot. And I'm sorry for what they did to you, but that doesn't give you the right to repopulate the earth with more screwed up kids. You're being selfish. Focus on the one kid. Get yourself cleaned up and give this kid up to adoption to a nice family that can take care of him. Right. All right? Uh-huh. All right, good luck That's with the program. That's your job. But you need to get with it immediately. Like, <coughs> call someone in the program tonight, tell them you're having trouble stopping drinking and you're pregnant, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Oh. I mean, just think about what these kids are growing up with. They're, they're living at the house of the parents of the first boyfriend who's not really on the scene. Second daddy's not around. Mom was drinking pretty good through the pregnancy. Mm. She wants to know about uh, pulling out her nipple rings in order to breastfeed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, she loves our what? band. I love Pull Mine. Pull Mine inspires her. <laughs> well, maybe maybe there's hope for her yet. Yeah. Oh, God. Kaylee is too early. I, I don't, here's, all, here's all I'm saying, and uh, Drew's heard it enough, but I'll speak to uh, Wes and Greg. I don't know that our society clearly gets the correlation between Kaylee's kids and the trouble society has. Do you know what I'm saying? All right, Kaylee's kids in the overpopulating jails. No, oh. <laughs> right. Well, Welfare, the thing is, is if whatever that kid's adopted, that kid could turn out to be the president of the United States, but it's got a hell of a chance, probably being with Kaylee. Right. That's exactly right. All right. In the meantime, we're going to a break. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll uh, take a break. Puddle of Mud is our guest tonight. Wes and Greg are both here. Come cleans the name of the CD, and we'll be right back after this. Everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. I'm in Nevada tonight. Puddle of Mud is our guest. What up? Come Clean is the CD. Wes and Greg are both here. Drew? Yeah. <clears throat> you'd uh, appreciate this. Uh, about two minutes before the show started, there was this nine-year-old kid wandering the halls here at uh. the radio station. And I said, uh, hey, kid, you know how to make coffee? And he <laughs> said... Uh, I think I do. Uh -huh. I said, great. Go in that kitchen and knock yourself out. He comes in here a minute ago. He hands me this cup. Uh -huh. It's half full. Uh -huh. It's sort of warm, suspiciously warm, but not like it went through a coffee thing. It's just warmer than room temperature. Oh, so and it is just like somebody drained transmission <laughs> fluid into a cup. It is black. It is just black as the night. It is thick as oil. And I have no idea what this kid just did. You've got to give him an E forever, boy. I got one kid <laughs> would make you great coffee. The other two will make you sludge. All right, well, oh, you mean your kids? Yeah. Oh, Drew, it's got to be a great day in a parent's life when you can train your kid to make coffee oh, in the morning. please. 
the coffee, the clean the table, the uh, speak English and be understood. Man, I, I don't want massive. I don't want kids I don't want kids until they can make coffee. That's my new policy. <laughs> In fact, that's when life begins. Let's is define that, that a, <laughs> let's define life as beginning that. Shall what we? is that about eight or nine or what is yeah, that? Yeah, eight nine. Well, what if I enrolled them in some sort of coffee-making program instead of all this well, crampy swimming and see? math and all this other nonsense? You see how fluid it is to define when life begins? Right, right. Here's what I'm saying. Instead of taking my kid and, put him in, and putting him in like a tumbling class, some nonsense <laughs> he's never going to use, or if he does, it's to get at his own junk when he's in high school, <laughs> I'm going to teach him. I'm going to enroll him like some culinary coffee school. <laughs> hey, it's a good plan. i got to write that down. <laughs> good time. Here we go. <laughs> This is uh, Stephanie, who's 15. Stephanie. Hello? Hey, what's going on there? Um, yeah, okay. I went to this party, and um, this guy told me to come with him to another room. And I was really stupid, and I went with him. How old was this guy? He was, like, um, 18. Yeah? You were at a friend's house, or where were you? No, it was, like, a bunch of girls, like, together. Where were you? Well, by, my, my friend, like, we're making this party, and like, a bunch of guys and girls come over. So at you were at a house. friend's house. At her house. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. And I went there, and this guy told me to come out with him. Whatever. And I was like, I didn't think it would be any harm, so I went with him, and he raped me there. Have you been in, in, the, in the house? Yeah, like, he took me to another room. Like, Did you try, try screaming or yelling? or? or I was so freaked out. I didn't know what was going on. You sort of froze. Right. Had you been victimized in the past at some time? Were you sexually abused or anything like that? I don't know, my dad used to touch me, but, like... Yeah, there we go. I mean, it's amazing the way victimizers find victims. They just know it. They just know it. I cannot like, believe that. That is amazing. Yeah. And, well, uh, we, I mean, shocking, we know... Shocking. We know she was victimized because if she hadn't been victimized by her dad, she would have, like, screamed and clawed and torn this guy up and made a bunch of noise, and right. it wouldn't have happened. But when she's, she has had that ability, she's, she has been sort of indoctrinated into being a powerless person by parents who were supposed to empower. They took that all away from her, and now when somebody else takes advantage, uh, she's a willing victim. Not a willing victim, Stephanie. I mean, we're talking about you behind your back in front of you here, but this is just the way things, these things get set up. It's a disaster. Can you can you report this guy? I don't know. I'm scared to. Like, I don't know what I'm going to get how, out of this. How old are you? 15. And he was? 18. Well, how long ago did it happen? Two months ago. Did you did, did you, you did, did you like did you like you know give him some kind of sign like it was okay? I don't know. No, let's uh, just put uh, a fifteen year old give me an eight year old a sign. Yeah, not possible. exactly. The, 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 the guys, sign. you know, still eighteen. Were you drinking? No, you weren't drinking or smoking pot or anything. No, just like hanging out. Was he? Yeah. Did you he start was. kissing him? No. No, there was nothing. He, he just, just went right for it. yanked you in another room, and the next thing you know, he was trying to like get down your pants. Yeah, I was very freaked out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so so why didn't she just like kick him in the balls or something? Because she's a victim. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. So she, she froze. She's, she's she's scared. Yeah. Do you know the guy? Do you know his name? I know who he is. Can you report him? I'm scared to. Like, why? What are you afraid will happen? I don't know. He okay. won't do nothing. Here's the reality. He, he, he'll he, freak he, out. He's threatening me. With what he has threatened you? Yeah, he told me if I tell, he's gonna get me in trouble and like. Because well, you know he's gonna get in trouble. That's BS. They always say that because he's but, scared. But Lauren, we were supposed to, we were supposed to get a Torrance policeman in here to talk about how to do the reporting of rape and how the procedure goes. And uh, at very least, Stephanie, it may not do much for you to report this, except maybe to get you a little bit out of that victim role. And secondly, it'll at least create a record for him, which I suspect is already quite lengthy. And at least it might. Um, Increase the likelihood that the next time this guy perpetrates a, a, a crime, something really will happen to him. What did your dad do to you? My dad, he used to like fill me up, like, mm -hmm. and like I feel very uncomfortable. He, he used to, but th that was all he did to you. He just felt you up. Yeah, and like sometimes he like I don't know. How long ago was that? Once he like what? He had sex with you once. No, he wanted to. He wanted to. And how old were you when that was all going down? I don't know, like six. Six, seven. Oh, so my Steph God, that's terrible. S Stephanie, you've got to get yourself some help. I mean, not so much for this recent event, but more for what your dad did to you. Can you talk to a counselor or something? Where did I go to find help? Uh, I've got my phone numbers. Maybe she, like, visualizes her dad as she was getting, like, abused by no, the other no, guy. No, 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 no. It's okay. just that the wiring gets screwed up as a result of parents doing this to their kids. I mean, this is sort of a typical love line call, I'm afraid to say. Is, is your dad an alcoholic? No. 
He, he does. He did this stuff sober. No. Okay. Here you go. Ready? Hold on. Okay. One is one eight hundred children. Okay. The other is one eight hundred four four eight. It says four six six three here, but I thought it was four four six three. Oh Jesus! Great. Drew. I have to go, hang on. I have to get up and look at the sign. Oh, get the man. number right. Well, Drew, why are you giving her two <laughs> numbers? Just give her the number. Hold on a second. He's finding it. Please but Drew, hold. why do you have why do you have to give her two numbers? Shut up! I'm looking at something. <laughs> Adam, give him a break. All right, brother. All right, he's well, really working hard right now. He is, man. He, he got up off his job. chair. One eight hundred five four zero four thousand. Five four zero four thousand. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, Stephanie. He's got a bunch mm. of them. Uh, is your dad still around? No. Oh, where's another call for you? Well, mom got got rid of him. Yeah. But here's okay. here's, a, here's a good one. This is I know this service. It's one eight hundred four a child. Call that one, okay? For a child. One eight hundred four a child. Number four, a child. Mm -hmm. all, all right. Yeah. Good all luck, right, Stephanie. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. And report, and report this idiot. And, and look, don't get pregnant. Oh. <laughs> See, I want to get yeah. hold of her early. <laughs> I'd put her on the Nor plant right now. Here's I mean, a, think about this poor girl. This is an interesting follow-up to this. Uh, put number three on hold, please. Oh, Damien, put number three on hold, please. They're just <laughs> uh, Katie, Seattle, twenty. Yes, hi. What's going on? Um, I have a question about the guys I'm attracted to. I've been All victimized right. in the past, and so I realized that the guys I'm normally attracted to that are a little bit not nice guys, typically. What do you mean you're victimized? Um, my first sexual experience, I was raped when I was 15. You were 15. Right I turned 16. And I was passed out. I was drinking. And woke up to someone on top of me and pushed him off and had some drama. You know, Hold on. Hey, Drew, is, is that Tara back there? No, I think it's uh, Katie's like a dispatcher in a, in a 911 line or something. <laughs> Where are you? Yeah, She's at Walmart. Walmart. Me? Where am I? Yeah, yeah. Megamart. I'm in my apartment. Well, well, turn, the, turn the TV off or whatever's going on in the background. I turned it off. All right. Is it better now? Yeah, much better. Well, unacceptable. Unacceptable. But listen, um, that, that is, to me, I, I know it's sort of a, a, a superficial brush with your story, but I, I think that's a little less victimization and a little more alcoholism. Mm hmm Okay. Right. You're an alcoholic, right? Mm, I don't actually drink very much. Like, I will drink maybe... On average, two drinks a week. Yeah. Well, she and got I work so at a place where I have full. Like, if I want a drink, I can go up and get a drink. I can. Oh, really? You yeah. ste steal me a bottle of Myers or something for later? It's harder to steal the hard alcohol. Sorry. Oh, okay, it's cool. <laughs> well, give me like a keg. Yeah. But Drew, Drew, why do you think she's an alcoholic? Well, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm a, deal a pothead. I'll yeah. admit that. I'm, there we go. Here we go. Because because here's the deal. She did fight him off. She created a drama, which is like sort of an alcoholic thing to do, and she this all happened in a blackout. It all happened as a consequence of her alcohol use. So right. This is about her addiction. This is not about being a victim. Okay, See the difference? If she, if she were a victim, she yeah. would have frozen, and it would have happened three more times after that. Well, and the thing is, is that after that, I have a very hard time, like, I, it, I don't want to all the time. You're not really attracted or, or something. I don't know. Go very far with them. I have really weird feelings about it, but uh, it's really hard for me to say no. Yeah. So, are you in a relationship now? Not really. I there's one guy that I've been that I guess I have sex with when I get really horny for the last year. But Jesus. It's not a relationship thing. Why? Why isn't it? You're not into him. Um. I don't. I don't really know what to do with myself in a relationship. Once a guy, he. Well, he doesn't want a relationship either. Okay. This is this is a pretty. I know you guys are going to say, "Oh, he this is a cop out. He's like getting the deal." But no, no, no. This is a kind of a complicated situation, Katie. This this is this is this is an addictive process underway. Number one, mm -hmm. that, that's sort of the the through line here. And then number two, there is this inability to form attachments. This inability to have relationships and using just arousal as a way of sort of getting your your human contact. Yeah, that's what I... And that's, that's, again, more sort of using the same part of your brain you use when you're smoking pot or doing a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's sort of trying to be gratified in that moment to try to escape things. Mm -hmm. And that's not 
a relationship. That's not reality. That's not a good. That's a way of treading water. But you're going to get very unhappy, yeah. and then your disease is going to progress going down this path. And I, I don't know. Now I met somebody that is really nice, but when yeah. I meet really nice guys, I eventually you get sabot- them you really, sabot- really quick. Well, you sabotage it. That's yes. it's too uncomfortable. Exactly. It's too real. It's too too vulnerable. Uh-huh. It sounds like so, a guy to me. That's <laughs> no. This is this is this well, is. Like uh, a- Katie, I really, if you, if you want to get better, if you're interested, go to MA or AA and get start a 12-step process and make some, some close relationships in the program and see if that doesn't start attracting you to and attracting to you healthier people. We want to hear a song, but I, is, this, is it okay to play a song now, Anderson? Okay. Adam. Yeah. Yeah, this first song is called Control, Puddle of Mud. Puddle of Mud, everybody off of their CD, Come Clean. I'm Adam, that's Drew. Wes and Greg are both here from the band. I'm guessing we're going to take a little break. Yes, we are. And Drew, who are we going to talk to when we come back? Would you rather have the migrating testicle or the burning semen or the pee standing up? Ooh. Uh, Is it a chick who's peeing standing up? Yeah, it might ruin it for you knowing that she's 13, Adam. Uh, Mm. No, I I could jack to that. (laughs) <laughs> all right unacceptable how about we take the uh, she's been on hold the longest so let's take her. all right well let's do migrating testicle first right, and then okay. we'll go pee standing up Fair and enough. then uh burning semen yeah wasn't that an elvis song this all sounds like movie titles to me okay we'll uh be right back after this all right here's in high school and stuff um, what happened exactly how did this happen so i got hit really hard in the, in the nuts <laughs> with what his knee or it's like with the shoe Oh, and it and it went up inside that little part of the where the testicle can like escape to. <laughs> but it went way up, so I just stopped the match oh, and I pressed it back down, and I went on with the match. It just kept coming up thereafter, and then would it go up there only like after you masturbated or ejaculated that kind of thing? Um, I didn't really notice it when I was younger, but uh, the only thing that I noticed when, noticed when I was like in high school is. One um, testicle was uh, lower than the other, so I I had to endure the nickname "One Hung Low." <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, if you could answer my question, would it mo- go back into that uh, slot up by your abdomen when you masturbated or when you ejaculated? Well, that's only started to happen now. All right. Well, that's normal. Yeah, so and, but just, it, it's it's push, push it back down, and it's but it's painful, and it feels like the left one kind of like smaller and. It rotates a little bit or something. Well, maybe you actually had... Is the left one the one that got nailed in the wrestling yeah. accident? Well, yeah. maybe you really damaged it then. Now, is, there, is it possible? Because when like, I'm with my girlfriend now, she has to tell me, oh, you've got to push it down now. Yeah. So is it possible to get surgery? No. It, to, to put like... Well, there probably is, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. Is it a rip? No. It's, it's, it, you, listen, you may have damaged the testicle. That testicle, the one that's smaller, may be dead, may not work anymore, may be sort of atrophied, we call it. Uh, the, the migrating business is no big deal at all. So Why not? Right. Why is that no big deal? Because it isn't. It doesn't hurt anything. Nothing no. happens as a consequence. No. All right. This is uh, Debbie, 13. Hi. Hey. What's up, Debbie? Hey. Hey, Wes, and hey, Greg. Hey. I love you guys. Thanks. I um, love you, too. Oh, thank you. Um, I wanted to, well, I can pee standing up. It, it's this feat I have mastered. Well, like, I, I, I can do, I've been, I've known how to do this for about, like, three months now. I'm pretty good at it. You've mastered it. Yes. How do you master how do you do it? I've mastered I'm, it myself, too. Yeah, well, uh, well, I'm still <laughs> a little bit shaky. I did not say masturbate. I can pee standing up. No, no, I can up, pee right. standing up pretty good. But what, yeah. what was the sort of training program you went through to? Okay, you want to know how I can do it? All right. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay, you have to, like, make a V with your finger, sort of, and then, like, you spread the inner lips of the... So, or, a- yeah, Adam, this is down. like pulling apart the two edges of the balloon uh, mouth. Like so a little make cushion? A- yeah. yeah. That's kind of crazy. Right? right? What the... What? Go ahead. <laughs> right? The, okay. Yeah, anyway, gonna... spreading the lips. Anyway, go ahead. Continue. Okay, you That's put crazy. your fingers near the urethra, and then you pee, and you can, like... Aim with a stream. What? And I wanted what? to know if um, any if there's like anybody else that knows how to do this because like they. Well, I've, as I've with been... most things, humans have figured out just about everything. But Debbie, this may be something that no one, no one had quite mastered. Party. This, she's probably the first female that can write her name in the snow. <laughs> Haven't tried that yet. Yeah, eBay, eBay. 
<laughs> is so Debbie, is it do you do this all the time this way now? Yeah, pretty much. It's like easier and it's like faster. Are you a lesbian? No. Jeez, Don't you think if uh, somebody walked in on you in the girls' room, they'd freak a little bit? <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't really do that at school, unless like there's nobody in the bathroom. But she could really, she could. Uh, then, like they'd see like my like my feet pointing the other way and think I'm like a guy or something. She's from Van Nuys, Debbie. I Adam too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can't fantastic. be in the snow. Yeah, but she could. You know, here in Los Angeles, we don't have like dividers. She could go to the man's room <laughs> and stand at the trough with the guys. No one would care in this in Van Nuys. I don't think. All right, Adam, we got to go to break. Christ. Yeah. Oh man. I, you know what? I I, uh, I crapped on myself this morning when I was in bed. <laughs> what? You, what you wait, whoa! Wait yeah. a minute! Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we got to go to break, and you're going to well, tell yeah. me. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you're going to tell me. You're going to tell me all, right. me all about this when we return. All right, remind me. Puddle of Mud is our guest. We'll be back after this. Hello, everybody. I'm Adam. That's Drew. It's Loveline. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Wes and Greg are both here from Puddle of Mud. Come big up, big up. Hello. Is the name of the CD. And uh, Drew? Yeah. I'm what were we talking good. about? Uh, we were talking about you crapping yourself to put it in your <laughs> right, world. <laughs> right. Seems like it was only yesterday. Yeah, so uh, what? what is this all about, pray tell? Well, uh... I, it was this morning. I had to uh, make an early flight out here to Vegas. Um, I was going to get up about 7.30, but instead I, I got up about 6.45 when I thought I had blown an innocent fart. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. And uh, as it turns out, uh, some liquid form of the Escaped. fart had come out of oh, me. Oh, it looked like bile. Yes, and I knew I was in bad shape when I stood up and I could feel something on my calf. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's always a bad sign. So you got, as my kids call, Baba Bia. <laughs> yeah. You, you know that quick, you know that, that damage Bia, assessment? You have to do that damage assessment when you're a little bit out of it and it's dark in the room and you're not sure just how bad the damage is. And then you realize you're stepping in something and you realize, oh. okay, oh. this and is And then bad. after it's all over, you're like... Man, what am I going to do with my pants? Like, <laughs> right. You soak well, them in the well, bathtub. Then, do I, do I go or, back to bed after this or take a shower? Yeah, take take a shower. Up. Or I think a bath. To, yeah, it's time to wake up and get your day started, I think. After nope. That. Did yeah. not take a shower yeah. until you guys this evening. Oh, you my guys God. Do not know Adam Carolla, obviously. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You must have smelled like ass walking around. Well, now, here's the thing I got that toilet seat that sprays water on me. What'd you do with your leg? <laughs> well, that, that I could get to with a Kleenex. Kleenex. You understand no there's still quite a bit of uh, debris left behind, after <laughs> thing, especially with your hairy ass and legs. <laughs> well, back to the point. True, there's stuff floating all over the place. Oh, we don't know you what must it is. Shrapnel. You must have smelled like you stepped in dog oh, I, I, I cleaned myself up as best I could, and then I realized that I had about another 35 minutes I could get in. So I flipped my comforter completely over, oh, which looked like a oh, Rorschach oh. test oh. on one side, and I slid over to the good part of the bed. Your poor girlfriend wasn't there, was she? Oh my God! Well, no, she she wasn't, but she's gonna get she's gonna get suspicious when I uh, tell her we have to change sides now. But I'll make up something about being, being closer to the alarm clock. Have you had or any further movement since this morning? No, you know, but you know what? And I'll tell you, here's the real dangerous part. And, and it's like any great athlete who gets injured uh, out on the playing field. I'm scared now. I'm scared to fart. <laughs> I'm scared you know to mean? fart. My, my oh, confidence has been rattled. Wow, and for you, that's, a, that's yeah, your you, primary means of enjoyment during the day. You, you see what I mean? Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so emotionally, it's been very difficult. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Let's I, save I the think, babies! <laughs> it, def it definitely must have been one of them nights, the, Adam. The <laughs> burning <laughs> semen call just dropped off the line, so we're going to keep moving on. Burning along. semen. Yeah. All right. Here's Ray from Baltimore, 24. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. What's up, Ray? Hey. Uh, not much. Uh, not too long ago, uh, I started uh, having dreams about this guy at work that I work with. I'm a mechanic, so things like this usually don't happen out there on the floor. Or they're, they're not talked about much. But, uh... I started having these dreams, like these uh, sexual dreams about him. Faggot better run. Drew, please, let him finish. Right. Uh, um, so I, I've known this guy, Ricky, for a while now, and uh, every time I had this dream... It's you know like, what? Uh, I, I don't believe it yeah, either. No. People do not mention the name of the person that they're feeling this way about on radio. 
Unless and it's... Mecha- mechanics are never gay. Yeah. <laughs> unless they work on English cars. <laughs> Here's Adrienne, 15. What? Hi, Adrienne. Hi. Hello. What's up? I'm on? You're on. Yep. Hello. Hello. Um, okay, I like this guy. And he's like, um, I don't really know him that well. And I'd never know what to say to him. Okay, so what? I want them to help. Like, I don't know what to talk about. Do you like the guy? Yeah. How old is he? Um, 15. And how, how long have you liked him? Um, like two or three months. Does he know you're into him? I think so. Why do you think so? I don't know. I like give him my phone number. Oh, and he, he called you? I don't think so. Uh, you don't think he's called you? Look, you don't even know if he's called you, goofball? <laughs> no, I... Jesus Christ. Of course you know. You would I never... I don't know. If he called, I wasn't here. All right, he hasn't called. No. If he intended to make contact with you, he would have made contact with you. So the suggest that he's not really... I mean, you've done what you need to do. You've, you've sort of stated your case. You've given the necessary sort of equipment for him to contact you, and that's it. It's, it's not happening. How did you give him your number? Um, my friend gave it to him. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and what did, what did they say? Did they say you were into him? I don't know. I wasn't there. I, like, walked away. I gave yeah, her I know, I know. Yeah, you didn't ask your friends what I, they said? No. All right, hang up As on a, Well, yeah. Okay. I've had enough. I was bored, too. Well, I, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I... I Hang on I mean, who doesn't talk to their friends and, 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 and squeeze them for every detail? Adrian? Hello? You didn't ask your friends what what happened when you talked to him, when they talked to him? No. she. My friend just said that she gave him the phone number and he didn't say anything. Yeah. Does he know which one you are? <laughs> um, yeah. How did she communicate that to him? I don't know. Okay. You need to be ahead. more on top of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just know. tired. Of, I'm yeah. just tired of her and her, her snot faced <laughs> attitude. <laughs> oh, who cares? So he calls. So he doesn't call. She'll be fine. Hello. Hello. No, we're cutting this one off. All right, this is uh, Jason. Fifteen. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> What's up, Jason? Hello. Um, I was wondering. Um, about marijuana because I'm a Luciferian and uh, the whole religion is like pretty spiritual, you know? Yeah. And um, uh, they have you do a whole bunch of mind exercises so that way you can get like more into it. Well, what, what does Luciferian mean? You're um, into Lucy or Lucifer? Lucifer. Oh, okay. it, it's like Satanism, not devil worshipping though, you know? Like it's um, about self belief and. Um, um, I have something for that, you. But more spiritual. Yeah. Maybe I could pray to Lucifer uh, not to cramp myself anymore. <laughs> well, Whoa, wait a minute. Way, pot wait. seems to be a very necessary ingredient in this whole thing. This is yeah. Jason's laugh. Yeah. Woo. Well, the whole thing is is that, like, uh, these mind exercises for me are really hard. Like, they have you hold things in your mind as still as you can for, like, five minutes, like a cube or something. And um, I, it's hard for me to do it for, like, five whole minutes. So yeah, you I need thought, weed for that, Ren. Well, yeah, see, I smoked, like, about two bowls and um i sat down to do it and i could do it actually really good <laughs> i bet <laughs> like the if i do just a little bit i'll laugh like nonstop. but if i do a lot i just get in like deep thought and um i was wondering what the whole process was of like marijuana like why it makes you think the way you think and like what the outcomes are if you keep doing it like more and more and more well i smoked before and I know I stared at a cube, but I called it a television. <laughs> um, you can do that. You can stare at that for hours and hours. It's a lot longer than five minutes. If you look at oh, le- yeah. electromyographs of brain cells after they've been exposed to marijuana for a period of months, they actually develop a layer over them. The cells layer? become sort of encased in, in, and no one knows what that chemical is, but it de- decreases the functioning of the cells in your brain. Right. Does it hurt them or anything? Like do you that? not. You don't, you're not transmitting the signals correctly. Right. Oh. Exactly. Well, I'm more interested in the Luciferian. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, well, Lucifer is, is Lucifer, right? Yeah, well, there are four crown princes of hell. Belial, yeah. Leviathan, Lucifer, and Satan. The reason why we... Wait, wait, uh, what, are they, what are they? Oh, so Lucifer and Satan are not the same dude? Oh, not at all. They're like cousins. They're like cousins. I, I well, don't know. See, of, I think, I think uh, Satan needs a publicist then because he's, <laughs> well, he's oftentimes confused. 
that's Satanism, and that's just more of non-spiritual. It's very humanist base. It's just you know, I believe in me, and if you don't believe in me, then oh, okay, and you're off with the F word. <laughs> All right, so, Drew, what would you do <laughs> if he was like 15 and a Luciferian? This is this is uh, the same thing that that uh, John, what's his name, that did that went off to Afghanistan to become an Al Qaeda. Oh, right. This is the same. This is the same brain set, brain set, mindset. You know, he just it got is? he just got lost and confused. This you know, is and somebody just accidentally who, joined the Taliban. This is someone who has a, <laughs> a no sense of self, very profound emptiness, and is searching for some way to fill that emptiness. I did the same thing. I was a Catholic. He's a, he's in a cave, I think, right now. Right. How bummed out are that guy's parents? By the way, the guy who went to guess <laughs> what the Al Qaeda network. Guess, guess what? His parents are pathetic. The, da- <laughs> know, dads, the, the dads think when he, when he started dressing in robes and Afghan you know uh, outfits in wherever he was in Northern California and chanting, this father thought, "Oh, hey, good, you're expressing yourself." <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> he said he. Got, I saw you that he idiot. Goes, I, he got caught up in something, and it was. We, I mean, we encouraged you know, you it. You get caught up in cocaine. It was a phase. It was a phase with self-expression. We thought it was kind of you know expressive and artistic. Oh, you idiot. Funky that kid was like piercing your ear. Or that kid need, needed treatment just the way this kid needs treatment badly. This is someone who's profoundly disturbed and searching for answers and not. Or he's just them. really stoned. That's part I, of the I like the uh, I like the fact that really that guy's sad. parents, John, whatever his name was. First off, I love the fact that he has the world's most American mundane name. Yeah. <laughs> like his, his name's like John Smith or John Miller Williams. or something, right? Or Williams. And the the thing that's funny though is the parents are worried about him now. It's John Walker. Like John Walker. It's Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. There you go. Scotch baby. I mean, this kid was just living on the desert, eating scorpions and uh, <laughs> shooting, <laughs> sh- you know, hanging out with a bunch of bearded rapists who are praying to Allah for the last few years, and they didn't seem to be worried about him at the time. And now that he's in American hands, they're very concerned. <laughs> How long was he over there? How long was he doing that? I mean, since he was 18 or something? Well, I think he'd been sleeping for a long time, because when I saw him on CNN, he looked like he just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like Cat Stevens. Now. <laughs> it is Cat Stevens. He's Muslim, <laughs> right? Cat. Oh Drew, figure, find out where Cat is. It could be him. <laughs> this is Sarah. It's 24. Hello. Hi, Sarah. What's up, Sarah? <laughs> What's up, you guys? Not much, baby. Uh, um, I have a question. A couple months ago, um, like two or three days after my boyfriend and I had sex, his ball started hurting. And he said it felt like I kicked him in the nuts or something. One ball hurt or both? Both. You sure? And he went to the doctor, and all the doctor did was like ask him a couple questions, and then put him on antibiotics. Right, that's all he needs to do. Do you know? But what would that be from? Because it's epididymitis. And what is that? That's an inflammation. It's a. It's often associated with infection, inflammation of the prostate. It is an infection and inflammation of the little cap that sits on top of the testy. It's a very simple thing to diagnose and an easy, pretty easy thing to treat. And they usually give you like an inflammatory. Give you an antibiotic and or an anti-inflammatory, mm-hmm. and you have to take it for a few weeks. And chlamydia can cause it. Other bacteria can cause it. it it's it could potentially be an STD, uh, and it's a common thing. And it's sometimes can become sort of chronic and become a real pain in the neck. It can be difficult yeah. to eradicate in some cases, but it's very hey, true. Very common. Does that have anything is, to do with like the type of sex we're having? If it's like anal sex or anything like that? Well, there's more bacteria. Right? Why? Well, it might gun. depend on the position. <laughs> you know? No, he's the more part is rubbing one part. barrel or doggy. He's a, he's, <laughs> his urethra is getting exposed to more bacteria, right? In the backside? Right. Okay, right. so that could definitely have something to do with it. Should be wearing a condom. Okay. All right. How often are you giving him the big A? <laughs> Every now and then, you know. Use plenty of lubrication. Yeah, we do. <laughs> there you go. Adam, you asked something? Uh, I wanted to know if this was something, a friend of mine got this when he was like in his early 20s. Right. And it's the only time I really saw it in anybody I knew. And then it went away, and I'm just wondering, is this something that happens to guys in their early 20s, or yeah. does it happen more? You don't see well, hear guys it, it, in their 40s with well, this, Well, because the guys in their 40s aren't having multiple partners. And that's where oh, is that risk what it's, your it's, risk that's risk. what it's from? Yeah, that's where the risk goes up. So it's like it's a sexually transmitted disease? Of sorts. Kind of. Right? Thanks for the clarity. Well, the fact is, it's not, it's not a classic STD in that it's not necessarily gonorrhea or chlamydia, though it can be. It can be any other bacteria, but when you're being exposed to multiple environments, there are lots of different bacteria that can you be exposed to. Yeah. Right? He's, he's been in all her environments. Brought into many jungles. 
<laughs> Mike is 29. Hi, guys. Um, I have a question. My girlfriend and I just had sex tonight, and uh, she's on her period right now, and, and we were just wondering what the possibilities were of her being pregnant, the, I guess, physical possibilities. It, it's possible. How can, how can anybody give you a number for I will, at I any mean, point during your period? It's her third day of her period. Yeah, but Mike, let's let's say you had pregnancy at uh, you had intercourse at day sixteen. What's the number? What's the probability that I'm going to have a? Nobody can give that number. It doesn't well, exist. We, well, we we can I'm say it's less probable. It's less probable than in the middle of the cycle, but it's possible. I, I still think you should take the morning after pill. Okay, he and should take it or she, she, should, she, take she, it. she should take it. <laughs> Smart. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, also, hey, she, yeah. She has, she has some. Uh, she feels nauseated every once in a while after we have sex, um, like a pocket of air, she says, in her stomach. Um, that lasts for like a day or two sometimes. Is that natural? or No, that can be cysts and can be uh, other kinds of inflammation, like endometriosis. You, Mike, you're 29. You're talking like an 8-year-old about the human body. Does she see a doctor regularly? Uh, no, she doesn't. Okay, well, wouldn't that be appropriate? Uh, you're probably right. Yeah, they get pelvic. If she's got something going on there that's causing some sort of visceral discomfort, and uh, it, it may be no big deal, but it's something that should be looked into. No, yeah, but listen, don't beat on poor Mike after well, all. But he was like, and, "Well, we have my put my pee pee in, and then she feels like <laughs> tummy pain for." It's like, "Hey, you're 29." <laughs> Go to no, a he didn't say. He didn't say pee pee. He said ho ho. <laughs> Deanna, <laughs> Deanna. Hi. Hi. Hey, a puddle of mud. I love your new CD. I listen to it daily. Thank oh. you, sweetheart. And um, tell me, Wes, is the little boy in your video for Blurry, is that your son? That is my son. He's beautiful. Thank you so much. It's so beautiful. Okay, my question is this. Um, my boyfriend is diabetic. And uh -oh. I know. He has a very low sex drive. Very low. And I have a very high sex drive. So it tends to make a few complications in our relationship. And... Is there anything you can take that's natural or anything that could help him with that? Why would it matter to you whether it's natural or not? Don't you just want something effective? Well, because he's diabetic, I don't want him to take something that might... So much stuff that he... That I understand he that, but, but for instance, a medication like Viagra was specifically designed for situations like this. That's it's why... It's not that he doesn't... It's not that he can't get it up. He just doesn't desire it. Doesn't want to get it up. Right. Go for you, oysters on the half you shell. Try getting him drunk. <laughs> how's his? Not, but how's, he's not supposed to drink either. So how's okay. his blood sugar? That's how's right, his, diabetic. I'm sorry. How's his blood sugar control? Uh, it, it's good. Sometimes you know, sometimes it's real high. He's he's been working on it. They're giving, they're changing his insulin amount right now. So what do you mean it's good if it's if it's real high? It's not good. Well, no. Well, sometimes it's high, but how often is it high? What they're doing right now is they're changing the insulin amount to see if they can monitor it a little bit more and keep it down more because it's not been good it's been a little higher than he, the doctor wants it where has it been um like 170s okay that's uh, unacceptable to totally unacceptable, yeah. and that's that's what's going on here. He's having the damage to the nerves to the penis and that part of his body from well, the elevated blood sugar. Well, hold on a second now, Drewski. What what should it be? What number should it be? Eighty to one, eighty to one twenty. And and then when he eats, it goes up in the two hundreds, no doubt too. Oh but yeah. she's she's it's talking. Been real high before. It's been higher than that, but and that is unacceptable. They're not in this day and age. She's not talking about his ability to achieve an erection. She's talking about his libido. It all it all will go together. Really? All right. Is 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 um, Viagra something that they made for di diabetics? Absolutely. That's really, I didn't know that. I mean, amongst other things, it, will work, it will work for diabetics. Okay. Well, just because I see in a lot of medicines I read now, I notice that it says do not take if you're diabetic. Right. I mean, it's something I never looked at before, but now I do. And well, here's the big problem, Dan. He has a a very dangerous disease. He's he has not taken care of properly. How old is he now? He's 35. All right. It, it, you know, he's done a lot of damage to himself by not having meticulous control over his blood sugar. Is he on what's called an ACE inhibitor to protect his kidneys? Mm. His blood pressure being monitored carefully? He, he's been doing his blood pressure every four uh, four times a day now. All right. So you see... He's, he's, it's not his blood pressure, his blood sugar. Well, his no, blood pressure is important to maintain also. And there, there are things that he can take to protect his kidneys. And he does uh, take a pill, but I'm not sure what it's for. I, I think it has something to do with his kidneys. All right. Well, in this day and age, there's just... N it's inexcusable for him not to have very, very tight control over his blood sugar. And he could avoid all the, all the problems if he really gets it back under control. So control of the blood sugar would help him? Well, might. It might. It will certainly pre prevent progression of the damage. Get the Viagra, too. 
Yeah. Just hey, in hey, case. Hey, Drew? Yeah. When, when you're diabetic, what, what can't you do? I mean, can you just chug a uh, glass of orange juice? No. Is that okay? No, 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 no. No? You, the, everything has to be in certain balance. Your fat and protein and carbohydrate intake, and oh. it has to be adjusted for the amount of insulin you're taking and the amount of exercise you're getting. You have to be really super structured. And, and most, uh, what happens most right. adolescents just don't do that, and that's when they really get out of control and have ketoacidosis and end up in the hospital, and they damage them. They, it's nerve damage. It's a vasculopathy. The, the blood sugar elevation causes certain byproducts to develop that damage tiny, tiny blood vessels that restrict the blood supply to the nerves. All the nerves get damaged. It's a mess. It's All right, mess. Drew? Hey, Drew? Are, are you a real doctor or just a love doctor? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, since we just mentioned Blurry in that last call, why don't we hear that song? All right. This is Blurry. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Puddle of Mud is our guest tonight. And the phone number for the show is... Uh, the phone fun. number, Drew? 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let's go with a little more uh, easy type call here. Melissa, 14. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I wanted to know if you guys have any ideas. I'm I'm going out with a guy who has his 14 too, but he's never kissed a girl. He's never had the chance to, right? We've been going out for almost a month, and I don't know how to approach him about kissing him because I want to because he's really sweet. I've liked him for four years almost, and same with him. We've kept it a secret from each other without even knowing it. Isn't that weird? Just Are grab him just by kissing. the back of the head, just kiss squeeze him. his hair, and just lay one on him. <laughs> he'll love it. Trust he'll me. Love he'll love it. Man. He'll have a Woody. And if he like likes you, seconds. you like him. It'll work. Bully. Are, are you guys yeah, oh, sure? You, are Are you boyfriend and girlfriend? Yeah. Well, see, I kind of have to keep it a, a secret from my parents. Why? I see. Why? Because my parents don't want me to have a boyfriend until I'm sixteen. Mm. That's very wholesome, yeah. That's very yeah. nice. And by the way, on your 16th birthday, they'll bump it up to 18. And at 18, they'll bump it to 21. At 21, you'll, they'll go to they 24. They at 36. They what? Oh, yeah. They said 36. I'm like, no. Oh, I, li I like your parents. <laughs> they, got, hey. they got it all Drew. together. <laughs> Drew, you said no boyfriends for your, girl, for, for your girl. I thought you said oh uh, po post-menopause. Did you say <laughs> post-menopause? I lightened up a little bit from that. I'll, oh, be, I'll be happy if that happens. They can hold hands. Yeah. It was it was post menopause or until you're dead, whichever yeah, comes right. first. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I guess. Okay. okay, so you can but you're sure the guy's your boyfriend. I mean, you guys Yeah, we've been going out for almost a month and Sounds serious. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't What know. do you What do you do though? Like if you don't kiss, we we kiss on the lips. We do little pecks and we hold hands and we hug and we cuddle and stuff. She wants to get the tongue involved. You want the tongue. Oh. Yes, I do. <laughs> we'll get the tongue. Just say, open your mouth, weird, baby. Though, because I went out with guys who are more experienced than me, and all I've done is make out and stuff. So I haven't done anything else. And now I'm going out with a guy that hasn't done that. I, I feel like... Uh, You're a little bit more advanced than him. You're fine. Just a tad bit, but not that much. All right. Relax. Everything is but, good. But, you can't... You, you shouldn't overthink it either. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it'll just... It'll just take its course. You just kiss him, and the next time you kiss him, you don't pull your head away. You just kind of keep it there. Yeah. And then you, you open your mouth a little bit. Right. Just grab him by the back of his hair and just do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, and, and don't, 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 don't let it screw up the whole evening up until that point. Just worrying about you, it. You know how that goes when you're yeah. a kid? Like you're, you're focused distracted. on the end of the evening, uh, so you're freaked out the whole day? Oh, my God. Chris, <laughs> if you start off a date with a fringe kiss, like next time you go to the movies or you see him and you just start off with your tongue down your throat, he won't stop till the end of the date. Uh, maybe. Probably. Chris is 29. <laughs> Hi, this is Chris. Uh, I just wanted to thank Puddle, Puddle of Mud because of the song that was they just played. Yeah. It, it, the video shows him... And his little boy and everything. Yeah, man. And I'm going through the same thing with my little boy, taking him home, and he don't want to go home to his mom and all that. Yeah, man. I understand it, where you're coming from, brother. It just kind of helps me because if well, I go to take him home and he balls and he just don't want to go. <laughs> does he not? Does he not like mommy? 
I I think it's more, and he don't really. His mom don't spend enough time with him. How old is he? He don't. He's five. Yeah. And he uh, don't like his stepdad. I pretty much know that one. Yeah, so basically, he just wants to hang out with dad all the time. Well, there you I go, man. It. So you're you're good, man. Well, maybe you so, can get custody of him. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to better myself, get a better job, and try to save up some money and that kind of that stuff. That is hilarious. It's like he the, this this his son wants to hang out with his dad all the time, yeah. but the father has no custody of no the right. son. No right. That is amazing. Uh, that is shocking to me, man. Do, I cannot believe that. Do you have well, joint him, custody? No, I get him like every other weekend and like holidays, every other holiday. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And I went through the same thing, man. I'm still the, going um, it. His mother, I mean, doesn't spend any time with him, don't really give a care about him. All she really wants is the support money. Right, the child support. Bitch. Yeah. That's that's a different story than, my, than mine, but yeah, I understand. Yeah, man, you know. It just dude. breaks my heart when I take him back, and then I've seen your video of that song, and it just tore me up. Well, <laughs> hey, man. I just thank wanted to thank you. you. It helps me every time I hear that song to be able to deal with that pain more. Well, I hope it helps you and uh, it therapeutically helps you out, man. Yeah. Thanks right, a lot, thanks. brother. Good luck. Good luck, man. All right, Chris. Wow. You know, you know what's just got to be a backbreaker is when you know there's some uh, a-hole stepdad floating around. Right. And the the reality is, is the stepdad is spending five times as much time with your kid than yeah, you are yeah, because yeah. you're getting yeah. him every other weekend. And yeah. he probably doesn't, he didn't care probably. And, well, not saying that, but nine times out of ten usually in that situation, sometimes it happens. Yeah, this it's, it, it's, it's, it, I've had, I have a couple of step parents and, uh, you know, let me tell you, even, even good step parents aren't great. <laughs> this is I mean, even ones that aren't bad, it's <laughs> like, hey, you're not their kid. <laughs> Oftentimes they have other kids, and it's kind of kids a pain in the ass. I mean, if it's not your blood, it's kind of tough on them. What do you mean you didn't have a bad stepmom? She was, yeah, she <laughs> wasn't. She wasn't bad by Loveline standards. She, she, passed you to, she passed you to the garage, had you showering in the hose bib out back, and crapping into a popcorn tin. Well, I, actually, I made the decision to crap into the popcorn <laughs> tin. <laughs> yeah, well, I was eighteen by then. Oh, okay. Oh, that, I've lost her to retain that. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is uh, another Chris who's 29. 27. Chris. Hey, how's it going, fellas? We're good. What up, Chris? Hey, uh, Puddle of Mud, you guys kick ass, man. Thanks, so, man. Much appreciation, brother. Hey, uh, Dr. Drew, I got a question for you. All right. Um, my wife, she wants to have kids. Uh, she's Mexican. I'm uh, white. Oh, that must be why she wants to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do you, why did you put the, why'd you throw right. that? She's Mexican. She well, has children badly. Yeah, why'd you throw just that about, Just about every Mexican family that I know at least has, you know, a minimum of three kids. Well, most people, you live in the valley? Fontana. No, I live in, uh, in uh, Fontana. <laughs> most, people want, most people wish to have kids. That's well, a common sort of thing. <laughs> That's, oh, that's look, Drew, we know what he's talking about. The Mexicans crank them out a All little right, Chris, more. Chris, what's, what's the question? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I was abused as a child, you know, pretty bad. Physically, and sexually, how? Physically. All right. And, um, you know, that that's kind of what's, um, I guess, kind of got in my head, you know, that I don't want to do that to my kid. Do you, think, do you think you might, that you couldn't contain yourself? Well... I've I've been uh, sober for about four years now. Yeah. You know I've been going. Congratulations, man. that's a good yeah. start. Thank you. Uh, matter of fact, this January will be four years. Cool. And um, I just uh, I'm really scared about it, to tell you the truth. You know. Yeah. Which how under- old how old is your wife? My wife is uh, 31, and I'm 27. Would she understand this? You know what I'm saying? Would she have a way of understanding what you're saying? I don't. I don't think she really does. I mean, she's come from this family that you know her father was. He was a great guy. You know, he, he died recently, and her mother. She's she's the best, and she come from this family that that you know you only see on like um, you know like movies and stuff. Well, she married you, Chris. Not you know. What I mean, <laughs> probably when you were in your disease, right? No, no. Actually, I was sober about. Uh, a year and a half when All she right. met me. Okay. All right. How many brothers and sisters does she have? She has uh, two, and I have two also. That's not bad. Yeah, huh? All right. And uh, she's 31 and no kids. Right. Well, and that, Mexican. She was, 
She well, was a, she was she's a, a keeper, man. She was she's the Mexican. She was a virgin when I met her. Oh, my God. A year and a half ago? No, it was, uh, we've been married about two years now. Uh, oh, my God. She was a virgin when she was 29? 29? 29. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? She was a me she was a Are Mexican. You sure? She's she been, a, like, seriously missing out I on some serious action. Are you sure she's not Puerto Rican? No, she's Mexican. Okay. She's what, what's, up, what's up with her? Something's up. No, she's awesome. She is the, the best woman that, that I've ever met in my entire life. And I know, but you don't meet a lot of quality single women. I know I mean, that. That's but, what I'm saying. Know, you don't have a lot to compare it to. What, I, what I'm saying is, is why was she a virgin at 29? What's up with her? Um, her family is very, very religious. And her, her father... He, he like. Uh, by the way, Chris, in, 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 the, in, in the love line world, that's usually a reason for casting out I mean, your virginity at fourteen. <laughs> right. <gonna> say. <laughs> now, hold on. She, he's getting to the point where her father scared her. Yeah, scared her into believing that you know that whole uh, uh, religious thing about staying pure till you get married and all that stuff. What did he scare yeah. her with? What did he threaten her with? No, I mean he didn't. He didn't like scare. Broken tequila like, bottle. You know, you'll be cast out of the family, kind of thing. If if you have sex before you get married, kind of thing. You know. So that you know. People... All right, hold on. I put him on hold. We need to talk about him behind yeah. his back for a second. This, Adam, this this is that the women that maintain their virginity at any cost, but do other stuff. You know what I'm well, saying? okay. First off, let's not ruin poor Chris's evening by explaining how many hundreds of times she had anal sex <laughs> in, order to, <laughs> in order to save her virginity. This goes back to that swallowing story at the beginning of the hour. <laughs> right. But, um. no, you show me a woman who, who up until the age of 29 was a virgin because her dad scared her into believing that she would be outcast from the family and cursed by Jesus if she did give up her virginity. And I'm going to show you someone with some issues at 31. That's a scary it might, You know what, what it might? It actually might be. It might be like she's, uh, you know, uh, whatever. I don't know. It's well, a scary old man, whatever it is. He's got to be horrifying. She married, and she married a guy that has abusive tendencies. But he's, he's in recovery and he's doing well. Okay. And, uh, well, right. Another thing, though, you got to think about financial issues whenever it comes to abusive parents is whenever, you know, if they're not, I mean, where is his financial status? Is he prepared to have a kid? Is he prepared to Let's be responsible that. enough to do that? Because if he's going to have problems at home, it's going to end up coming back to him, a kid anyway. I, I think the only answer for him is to talk to his wife about it. And maybe he can get some treatment. Maybe he can work on this a little bit in his recovery program. Uh, the wife needs to understand what she's getting into. About 60% of people who have been abused will themselves become, become abusers. And that needs to be sort of dealt with. And he may need to be on medication. There's all kinds of things that might be necessary in order to contain this guy's behavior. And certainly needs to be watched carefully by someone but other he, than the he, wife. He, he seems like he's on the right road. And if he's still nervous, why doesn't he maybe get into a little therapy and yeah. say, you know, I'm going to work on this for a year. And I'll feel comfortable, parent, and I'll, I'll be classes, 30, and classes. we'll start having some kids. Do you think his wife believes in the chupacabra, Drew? That's probably why she didn't have sex. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the guts, the goats. Isn't that like the weird out. alien thing yeah. that came from Mexico? Yeah. That's, that's, the, uh, chupacabra. that's the goat. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the goat. Right. Let's continue our conversation off the air about chupacabra. Right now, we got to go to break. All right, Drew. It's good radio. Puddle of Mud's <laughs> our guest. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Wes and Greg are both here from Puddle of Mud. Come Clean is the name of the CD. And let's get to more calls before the night is through. This is Level, I suppose, age 28. Lavelle. Lavelle, I beg your Lavelle. pardon. All right, Lavelle. What's happening, guys? What's up? Uh, hey. <laughs> got a question from Puddle, man. Yeah. Um, I had heard some stuff that uh, Creed ain't going to do no TRL or nothing like that. They're going to be sellouts. I was wondering, uh, how do you guys feel about that? Are you guys going to do the same? Uh, Creed is going to do TRL? Please no, they're not going to do TRL. Gonna. That's, That's what I heard. Does that make them a sellout? Whatever. Not What's TRL? On? Total Request Live. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, what, what do they mean they're not going to do TRL? Why does that make you a sellout if you're not going to do it? I thought that would make you, yeah, I thought that would be, I don't I'm just, I'm just asking, are y'all going to, like, keep it real? I mean, Freddie D had compared you guys to uh, Nirvana and stuff like that, so... Well, what, we, what's the haps, man? Are you guys gonna be like pumping out videos on TRL every every month, like Britney? And are you guys gonna have Britney all up in your videos, or? Well, <laughs> no. Well, man, yeah. shut up, damn it! I don't, I don't know. I mean, we got, we got. I mean, we were on TRL with the first video, but uh, that really, I mean, we don't have any control of that. I mean, if these kids like to call and request it, that's cool. And we did it because you know it's. 
it's a good thing for our band, you know, it's a brand new record. We got to promote the band, you know, it's like any other product. But, I mean, I don't I don't think we really care if we're on TRL or not. I mean, I know I don't. I know Wes doesn't, so I don't think it matters yeah, the to music, us. The music will speak for itself, man. I mean, we're playing, you know, bars for, you know, and clubs and stuff. We're not doing arenas. I mean, it's... Go ahead. How do, how do I find out where you guys are doing local stuff, man? I mean, uh, you, you can go to the website. Man. What's the website? Puddleofmud.com. Really? Yeah, you can find out what we're doing. I mean, we're going uh, to Europe, I believe, with Stain, and then we're going to come back and do a headlining tour and hopefully find a cool opening band that needs some help, you know, that's not maybe getting the push it gets, you know, and just tour and travel. So, man, it's cool. Headliners and stuff, and I, I'm sure, I mean, you guys... How'd you guys start off? I mean, you guys got back. Do you guys have people? You have people that follow you guys everywhere. I mean, it is Freddie D. Like on the way to get into the industry. Or? We have well, the palmettes. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we have our palmettes. You call them these chicks palmettes. Oh no, my um, God. well, Fred Durst really doesn't have any. I mean, he he, you know, basically discovered the band, and he's a smart dude, and you know, but he doesn't have anything really to do with the band. I mean, kind of like Stain. I know you heard it from Stain, like. He he gives us advice, but it's an, an, you know it's ultimately our decision over anything that we do. A Adam, yes, yeah. Lavelle's one of these guys that believes it's uh, luck. You know what I'm saying? Well, I I couldn't quite get a good read on Lavelle because he <laughs> was saying that uh, I don't know. Stain did TRL. No Creed. Or, or, no or Creed, Creed didn't do, do TRL. So are you going to sell out like Creed no, and not just, do TRL? No, his I'm not thing, sure what that was, meant. He, he was saying that. The, the in, in, innuendo here was you're a sellout, you're going on MTV too much, and and that somebody got you into the position you're in, right? Right. That, yeah, that, exactly. that I'll tell you what, I think the smartest thing for our, our band to do would be to tell radio to not play our songs on MTV, <laughs> to play our songs, and I think, you know, but, 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 <laughs> travel but, but, and play but Adam, you know, Adam karaoke has, bars. Adam has some feelings about guys like Lavelle, right? Well, listen, I, I don't want to get into Lavelle, but I, I just want to say that people think that Folks, whether they're entertainers or uh, singers in a band, have more control than they actually do. If if you put out a product and it gets popular and somebody starts playing it, it's it's not like you went over there, gave a Carson Daly a BJ, <laughs> and forced him to play. You know, slipped your CD in his ass crack while you're giving him a BJ. You know, somebody gave it to him. They liked it. The people heard it. The people liked it. The people requested it, and that's how it works. It's and, pretty and simple. Old, Ultimately, too, it, it, we're in this to make money. I think everybody is. It's a product. It's obviously a product you believe in, or you wouldn't be playing in, in with so much passion and, and cranking out CDs. And you want people to hear it. There's nothing wrong well, with the thing that. Is, it's a is, good product. Well, the thing is, is at this time in my life, I don't want to go back to painting houses. You know, I'm right. not in it for the money, but still, I'd like to be able to, you know... He wants but, to golf. Yeah, wants I want to go golf. Golfing. I want to golf. That's what <laughs> right, elbows. But what is what is the shame in people getting hip to your product if it's a product that's a good product? Well, kids get offensive because they think that they, you know, well, not you know, all cases, but they found the band, and I was the same way when I was a kid with Metallica, and whenever they broke, it was just kind of like, oh man. They're sellouts, and I felt the same way when I was 16, 15 years old. Now, granted, I don't know how that guy I was. I know I, he was older than <laughs> he was twenty eight. Okay, so are you there, Lavelle? No, he's gone. Okay, oh, okay, well, I think Lavelle. You know, he's interested in other things. <laughs> All right, this is George. Is twenty. Hey, George, how's it going? Hey, what's up, George? Uh, yeah, I've got a problem. Um, I'm in the military. And uh, my roommate uh, has told me a few times uh, about his homosexuality. And uh, why is that a problem? Uh, because uh, it's against the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, uh, to, to, to talk about it. To talk about it or to engage in any acts of homosexuality. Did you? Did you ask? Did you remind him of that? Yeah, I tell him all the time. Uh, you know, every time he brings it up, not to put me in a position like that because uh, I'm required. Uh, also, by the same uh, code, not to or to inform the authorities if I'm aware of a situation occurring like that. Huh. And uh, how is it that you have a roommate in the military? Uh, that's just how it works when you're on training status in the military. Uh, the first uh, couple of months, depending on what you're learning to do in the military, you have a roommate. Hmm. Are you close to this guy? Is he a friend of yours? Uh, uh, we don't really hang out. Um, 
we just kind of live in the same space, and uh, he's uh, studying something else, something different than I am. Has he ceased uh, talking about this? Has he? Ex- has, has he, he ceased- stopped? Stopped talking about? No, it? he 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 brings it up every once in a while, and I'll tell him. I say, hey, man, I don't I don't want to hear that. You know, you know how I feel, <laughs> and I feel I feel like it. You know, I'm I'm against the regulation, and uh, I think that it's a stupid regulation, but at the same time, I'm mandated by the UCMJ mm. to tell if it if it comes around. You know, well, I, look, next time he does it, just say, uh, listen, uh, Corporal uh, Cream Puff, you bring this up again, and I'm going to say something about it, so do not bring it up again, because you're compelled to say something. I, I don't agree with it either, necessarily, but I also don't agree with him bringing it up repeatedly when he knows he's putting you in a vulnerable situation. I don't, I don't understand why he would uh, jeopardize his career that way. Or, right, or, or put you in such an awkward position. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you freaked out about him, you know, coming into your room at night or something? Uh, no, it, that's not the problem at all. The problem is that if it does, uh, uh, if it were ever to uh, get out that he were um, homosexual to someone else like uh you know the unit commander or one of our platoon sergeants or whatever and uh, obviously they would come to me and ask me what i knew and that would put me you know bad exactly situation. Like he said. so he's putting you in a bad situation i think adam is right you just put him on notice that it's got to stop or you really can't you're you're obliged that's a what, what's rule, his but... what's his rank we, we, we we're done adam Oh, well, I, I still think the corporal cream puff should be worked in. I mean, well, that's, that's, that's a good one. Come Thank back. you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, it's Puddle of Mud is here. we got to go to break. Can we go out with our buddies from uh, boot camp? Anderson. You got another question, Widow? Bring it up. Hurry up. You gotta Hurry up. Get out of my face right now. Push, 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 you nasty dang. We want to puke. 1 800 all right, well, that's it, everybody. I want to thank Wes and Greg co- for coming in here from uh, Puddle of Mud. Thank you, Adam. Thank, thank you, you for having Drew. Us. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Drew. Greg is, is a new convert to the show. I am. I'm all oh, about thanks. it now. I'm sorry I uh, couldn't be with you guys in person, but... Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, 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 he yeah. He said he Keep likes it there next Jack- time. Jack- he likes it as much as bingo. <laughs> Just uh, keep just on don't... talking there, chisel nits. Don't <laughs> forget us on the way up. All right, uh, come clean is the name of the CD. Go out and get it if you haven't already. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Doctor Drew saying mahalo. Well, we have my put my pee pee in, and then she feels like <laughs> tummy pain. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors.